Hello folks, Florentine Santiv here, welcome to this video about my top 10 best heroes of King's Throne. Because yes, this is my own top 10. Even though I tried to be as objective as possible, ranking more than 130 heroes forced me to use criterias. Choosing and building such criterias had to be subjective, so let me explain them before jumping into rankings. I graded every hero of the game by giving them a score on three main criterias, with possibilities to get bonuses or penalties for three more things I wanted to take into account. Final scoring is the sum of all those grades. The maximum score a hero can get is 36. My top 10 is those who scored the highest using this method. First criteria is the raw potential of a hero. I used Fock Nightbringer spreadsheet for that, and I want to thank him for having built such a great tool. You'll find the link in the description, you should definitely download a copy for yourself. Basically what this spreadsheet does is to calculate hero's maximum attribute scores, simulating maxed quality, maxed paragons, maxed maiden bonding and everything. I use level 400 as a parameter because I think this is still the most common level to get your heroes to, even though you can go up to 500. You can see on screen the actual hero's rankings. For the 10 heroes with best maximum potential, I'll give a score of 10 points. From 11 to 20, 9 points. From 21 to 30, 8 points and so on. We could just stop here and have our top 10 best heroes right there. But I personally think that it's incorrect to only consider raw potential to determine the 10 best heroes of the game, because it's highly unlikely that you will build your heroes up to that point. It may happen, of course, and some players have such maxed heroes, but it's definitely not the majority. Knowing this, I see no point to determine which heroes are the best by only judging on a criteria that we will never meet. It's important, but not exclusive. One final note about raw potential. In case of a final score tie between two or more heroes, I will use it as a tiebreaker. In such case, hero with the highest raw potential wins, not his scoring on this criteria but his actual potential value in the order from top to bottom you can see on this slide. Second criteria is availability. Waiting for months to see a hero's fragments being available sucks and in my opinion is something you should take into consideration. Not only that, but if you want to push an event hero, you will most likely need 500 fragments for summoning him, raising his 3 paragons and enhance him to bronze. Usually the shop only offers 50 fragments at a time, in addition to what you can grab for playing the event. The point is that you won't be able to collect all you need in one stand, making it even worse. For these reasons, all event heroes get a score of 5 out of 10. On the other hand, Heroic Maidens tokens are much more available, and all of them get a score of 7. In addition, for Heroic Maidens you can get tokens of in-kingdom campaign missions, they get an extra point, up to 8. That would be Brunhilda, Elise, Jean, Diana, and Mulan. Zodiac fragments are everywhere as well and pretty cheap, so they all get a score of 9. In addition, any hero with tokens or fragments available either in Alliance Shop or Castle Seed Shop get a score of 10. Finally, VIP heroes get their own grading system. The less money you need to spend, the more points they get. From VIP 9 and up, their score is 1 because spending $14,000 to get a hero is not what I call being much available for players. Third criteria is buildability. It reflects what you need to do aside from collecting their tokens to summon them and raising their paragons. Every hero starts with 10 points and will lose some for each additional thing you have to work on to make them great. If you need to collect a maiden, minus 1 point. If you need to get a skin to unlock an additional paragon line or quality skill, minus 1 point. If you need to collect a skin for their maiden that unlocks a new maiden bond, minus 1 point. Gorda Ferret and Scheherazade get minus 2 because you have to look for something else than their tokens to build their paragons. Finally some heroes ask for some other heroes to be unlocked to make them better. This is what I call the squad effect, and the penalty depends of the squad. For Zodiacs, minus 5. For Round Table and Bogotter heroes, minus 3. For Legendary heroes and Gorda Ferret or Scheherazade, that's a minus 2. Finally we have bonuses or penalties. Specialization grants additional points for heroes that specialize in one attribute only, because they are easier to build. You can focus that attribute and get a good hero even if you don't work on the others. That's a bonus of 2 points. For a double specialization, no bonus or penalty. Such heroes are for example Lamerick, Jean, Elise, Goots, and so on. 
every all around hero gets a penalty of 2 points, because of the additional resources you'll have to spend to make them strong, for example charm on their maiden. Also, you would have a better kingdom power by spending manuscripts on 4 specialized heroes rather than on 1 all around hero. It might seem unfair for them but this is a reality I wanted to point out. Second bonus is utility. A military hero have more utility than the others, because he will be useful for hitting bosses and being competitive on alliance championship or cross-server battles for example. As such, military heroes get 2 extra points. Fortune and inspiration heroes get a bonus of 1 point because they help for merchant ventures and expeditions. Provision heroes get nothing, because they don't help with anything. About all around heroes here, they get 1 point. It's true that you can build them as military if you choose to, but again, they will have less attack power than pure military heroes so I can't give them 2 points. And last bonus is about quality skills. A hero with a 7 stars quality skill on his primary attribute type gets 2 more points, because of how much better you can turn your manuscripts on it. For more explanation about that, check out my tutorial about getting the best out of your manuscripts. A hero with a 6 stars skill gets a bonus of 1 point. And with all that being said, we're ready to discover the results. Congratulations if you didn't skip this part, you have earned my eternal respect. It was long, but I had to give those explanations. We will kick things off with honorable mentions, because a couple of heroes were tied up to 8th place with 27 points. Raw potential helped determining final rankings and unfortunately Mary, Purnell and Louise didn't make the cut. What makes them good heroes still is their build ability. You don't need much aside from collecting their tokens and upgrading their paragons to make them great. In case of Mary, you can find her tokens in the castle siege shop so she's pretty easy to build. Note that they also have decent military quality skills, with a 5 stars and one other, either 4 or 3. Since their second paragon gives a small military bonus as well as to their main attributes, they can actually be useful for military tasks. If someday developers of the game give a new skin to any of them, there is a good chance that they will be a force to reckon with. At 10th place, we have Valentin. Even though he is a rather old hero, he still stands his ground thanks to his 250% military paragons and a 7543 military quality skill lineup. His maiden skin also adds a 7th maiden bond for extra power. Only flaw is his availability. Honestly we don't see him very often, so building him will take time and a lot of gems or money, but aside from that, he's pretty good. Our good viking friend Ragnar stands proud at 9th place. His raw potential is incredible, even as of today. With a whooping 300% military bonus paragons, you can really wreck havoc in alliance championship with him. He usually is tied to the naval warfare event, and even though this event only happens on occasion, you can grab a handful of fragments in one sitting, which is pretty cool. We also saw him from time to time as progress rewards or final rankings rewards of a spend gems mini event, and can be an option from Amber DIY store at 50 bucks. It's a ripoff, but if you're desperate, at least you can make a move there. The only thing missing on him is a 7 stars military quality skill, but his 654321 lineup is still solid, and gives good usage of quality scrolls from rank 1 up to 6. At 8th place, we find one of the latest released heroes with Leonardo. I apologize for the poor quality photo, there are none available on the internet yet. Leonardo is the ultimate inspiration hero, with his 300% paragon bonus and his perfect 7654321 one quality lineup. As such, his raw potential is phenomenal, but for inspiration only. That won't stop him from being a powerful hero on tourneys if you choose to build him seriously. At 7th place, we find our first hero scoring 28 points, and this is Diokin. I won't deny it, this came as a surprise for me to see her ranking that high, but when you take a closer look, it only makes sense. Getting a hero with 200% military paragons and a 7643 lineup so easily is an incredible trade-off for her lack of raw potential at super high quality levels. No skin to get, no maiden to summon, a reasonable amount of tokens to build her paragons to max, said tokens being quite available through events, that all sounds pretty good to me. Well played, Diokin. Going on with heroes at 28 points, Diana claims 6th place. I almost created a beauty criteria to make her rank even higher, as her hero skin makes her one of my favorite best looking heroes. What a woman. Her two new skins pushed her up to such a high ranking, 
and they are the only thing that you will need to build her aside from her tokens. Those skins came pretty expensive the first time they were released, but have gone down in price on latest events they were available. That is good news, because they make her the best fortune hero of these rankings. As a bonus, you can also work on her military side because a 120% military paragon is nothing to sneeze at, on top of her incredible fortune potential. Her tokens are also fairly easy to get, from kingdom campaign expeditions to various events as bonus rewards like garden stroll or others. She's one of the most affordable options to build a super strong hero rather easily, and you can't go wrong with her. On 5th place, we find a headless hero in the name of Dullahan. This guy is just brutal with his 300% military bonus, his 765 military quality lineup and his 5 stars quality skills for other attributes. On top of that, you can also add his dedicated beast, Pendrag, which is not taken into account for these rankings, and you have one of the best heroes out there. Only concern is his availability, as all event heroes. He came up on Halloween, you can expect to come back for it next time but will we get more chance to build him up in the meantime? I certainly hope so. Now at 4th and 3rd place, we have two different heroes with the exact same score and raw potential, because they are strictly identical. Twins, if you will. As such, it's a perfect tie between them, and all in all it's not a bad thing because both Hans and Boars are the perfect military heroes. 300% military paragons, a sick quality lineup, beautiful maidens, what more can we ask for? More availability? Probably, even though Hans popped up twice in the last two months, which is phenomenal. Boars was featured in the last fishing events, and since we haven't had that for a while now, it's probably coming back soon. If it were only me I would put Hans for third place, because I like his looks more than Boars. Especially hero skins. But that's just me. But seriously, why one of the best military dude out there is looking like he just came back from the beach. This is ridiculous. Hans is the best. Period. At second place, with an insane score of 31 points we find Mulan. She looks a lot like Diana, but with a better hero skin with 100% bonus to all attributes instead of 70%. On top of that, she is one of the easiest heroic maidens to build, because her tokens are everywhere, including Castle Seed Shop. Having the possibility to build such a strong hero for that little effort is just great for everyone, and for the game itself. So save up your gems for the next time those skins come back again, build Mulan in the meantime, and thank me later. And finally, on top of these rankings, with a score of 32 points, Queen Elizabeth of England takes out the whole thing. Her new skins turned an already strong military hero into a monster. She may not have the highest raw potential, but her availability and buildability as a military hero is unmatched, since you can find her tokens waiting for you in the Castle Seed shop. Players did not go wrong by voting for her to get new skins when developers asked them who should get new ones. Her looks with her new skins are a big no for me, but this should not stop you from building her, and the good news is that it won't even take you long before you can start annihilate everything. And there you go, you now know my top 10 best heroes of the game. So what do you think about it? Please let everybody know what's yours in the comments and let's start arguing. As a final note, I want to thank Milo for letting me using her data sheets on this video. Her work is just phenomenal, I hope she never gets bored of it and do them forever. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will hopefully see you around, and consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out when I release new ranking videos in the near future. Bye bye.